Hi everyone, in this series of videos, we're gonna learn how to build an app from scratch, even if you don't have any technical background or even a device where to run it. We're gonna build an Android app that it's gonna be able to run in a phone and uh, to just highlight how easy and simple and how non-tech requirements are needed. I've got here my son, Leo. He's gonna be my assistant today, so he's gonna be learning with us yeah, uh, how to I write. I do not know absolutely anything but he's gonna teach me. Yeah, he doesn't have any technical background and we don't have an Android device, so we're gonna do it all from within our computer. You can do it from your iPad, from your uh, Windows phone. machine, from... Phone. I don't know if you can do it from your phone, but but uh, I haven't tried it, but we are going to get started. So today, the platform that we're gonna use to build this doesn't require anything else other than a web browser. And uh, for that, we're gonna go to, uh, to Google and find App Inventor. So now that we're an App Inventor, we're going, we're going to create apps. Hooray! So today our agenda is to understand what is the App Inventor. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Scratch, the programming language. We're going to talk a little bit about what are variables and what are data types. That is what we're going to get what to today. And we're going to do a very simple, you're going to find out today. So by the end of today's video, we're going to have an app created a very simple app that actually can be run on an Android phone. What we're going to be doing uh, today is that we're going to start creating a project and we're going to create a blank project once we're logged in. So Leo, uh, can you name this class one? What? The name? Yeah, type the project name, class one. Please. One, okay. Okay, and hit okay. Okay, so we end up uh, Right now, before you touch anything, I want you to understand what we're seeing here. We're right now on the designer uh, view. The top bar here at the top actually says that what you can do with with the project. You can either export your project or import a project in case that you were working on it, create a new project. You can create Wait, and- how, we, how do we send it to an Android phone? Oh, you use the connect uh, menu here. And then it would go into the app store? You could, you definitely could. I wanna make a lightning queen app. This well, is my favorite we, uh, certainly after all these uh, videos, you you could start designing your own if Let you want to. Lightning queen? Yeah, you don't even need to know any coding. Okay, so then on this menu, we can either use, if you don't have a, you don't have an Android phone, do you? No, I only have a well, you can, Apple tablet. You can use the emulator. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to use the emulator, we're gonna go into the connect area and we're gonna, uh, this thing is gonna say that, uh oh, we cannot do it without, uh, uh, we need the AI starter. And so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go and find the AI starter Mac. Mac. And that's from the App Inventor. We're gonna download this and it's going to download to our computer. And this is how in the class we're gonna install our App Inventor. If you get a, in, in, if you're in a Mac and you get a security warning, it's because uh, it's an unidentified developer. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna to go to security and uh, in the general tab, we're gonna click open anyway. It's gonna ask us for the machine password and we can continue installing. Files. What's MIT? MIT stands for M Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Oh, I heard that before on one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, really? Wow well, it, it's one of the best technical universities in the world. So, what we downloaded the App Inventor. Yeah, it looks yeah. this icon like this, and we're going to continue installing it. It's a little bit heavy. Uh, it is going to install about five, half a gigabyte. I'm going to create a video game. Well, hopefully, you can, yeah. So this thing is going to it's install... It's a Disney Cars racing video game. Really? With this guy. Wow. Lightning McQueen. We're going to reboot because it's asking us to do so. Android. So we're back in here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to click emulator. emulator and it's going to start it. And now Android. it's going to start the, the Android emulator. So we don't need a phone to work uh, with our with our app that simulates an Android phone being inside of your computer. It's like a virtual video game. So now it is there. Okay, so it's saying we're gonna click on this. Got it. It's 
install. We're gonna continue setting it up Wait, to make it? sure, hang on. It's installing on. that thing. And now we're gonna go again and click emulator. emulator. It's going to start saying in the background here that there is 12 seconds to ensure that everything is running. So now it's starting the app. We're gonna click next, next, next. Okay, starting the application. It's starting the application. We're just letting it run. There you go. Now we have this thing running. Whatever we whatever we have there that it's nothing, it's running, okay? So now we don't need to do anything else. Then the next item here is in case that we wanna create an APK. An APK is in case that you wanna get your app downloaded to the App Store, to the Google Play Store. These are just settings about the project, and you can browse your projects, look at galleries, How do I draw? things like that. But what we're gonna go back is into the into the My Project, and the next bar here, uh huh, it is. So wait, is this how people make apps and update it? Similar, similar. This is using MIT's App Inventor, which is just creates a web-based non-code. Mm -hmm. environment so you don't need to know anything you don't need to own a, uh, a professional development toolkit to build some apps oh. this is just as an introduction to coding all right so um, then class one this bar up top is going to tell us how many screens we have screens are just essentially how many windows the application is going to have you can either click add screen or remove screen to add more things and then you can navigate it. So for example, we're gonna create screen number two. And screen number two looks an awful lot like screen number one in this case. Uh, but we can add different screens so that when I, we click on something, let's see, screen name, we're gonna confirm that we wanna delete it. But anyway, we're back into just single screen. Uh, the next thing is that we have either designer or blocks. Wait, Designer what? is this view where we can choose what we're going to add in uh -huh. a graphical way. And the part of blocks is how we're going to be adding the code for the application. The, the easiest thing is uh, to explore a little bit of this designer view. Then on this left, uh, left part, we are going to have all the things that are available for us to play with. So we can add buttons, checkboxes, images, labels, etc. We can then add, uh, in this thing, we can use some layout uh, for organizing the app to be displayed in different ways. Okay, so then the next one is about media stuff that you can use, either play music, record sounds, use a camera, uh, image manipulation, drawing. Here it is, your drawing stuff. If you want somebody, something yeah, that, that got you excited, you can make an area that people can draw in there. The next tab is about uh, map information. So in case that you want to add a, a map, uh -huh. and you know maybe you want to uh, build like a little application that I don't know tracks how many bicycles, bicycles? are in driveways. So you can yeah, if you want to see who your fr your friends could be, you could make an app using the map. Unless you, people are walking in the street, they can be oh this person might want to ride the bicycle with me or something like that. Sensors is for things that are built into the phones. The phones have a lot of sensors. Like um, motion sensors, like a face ID for an iPhone 11. Sure, or, or ev they even have an accelerometer, which understands how fast the phone is moving. Even watches have that, that, that type of sensor. Oh, like, like when you go running, you have that thing on your... And it detects where I ran, because oh. it has it knows when I started moving, mm -hmm. and it knows when I'm when I'm stopped moving, so it can start and, and stop the the workout. So oh. there, there's a bunch of different sensors in that inside of a phone or inside Just, of devices. So you, wait, so it pauses by itself when you when you stop running, yeah. and it goes like pausing workout. Yeah, and same thing here. Devices do have uh, a pedometer, which is tracks the amount of steps. I can track the amount of steps. The phone has that built in. It has a proximity sensor to know if you're close to things. So, for example, when you're doing Apple Pay, you can use a proximity sensor. No, so like, like, yeah, like sensor. The gyroscope is a sensor that checks if you are turning around. Like, like, like on um, virtual reality device. Yeah, virtual reality. Yeah, virtual reality and uh, moving around video games. Yes, a bar barometer measures the pressure. Accelerometer like, is for example, how... there 
on App Store, when I went there, there's a game called Minecraft Earth, and you can literally move around like an accelerometer or something. Well, that has the accelerometer and the gyroscope. Uh -huh. It uses both sensors to know where you're looking at. So you can start playing with sensors on, on using the MIT App Inventor. The next thing is a contact picker, in case that you want to add, like, you know, utilize Phone your number? contacts to like send messages or things like that in, in your app. Next thing is a database and storage. You can either use a cloud database, a file, or a tiny database to store information from your phone. The next tab is an activity starter. Well, it's, it's for connecting to either web services, mm -hmm. like APIs or things like that. So that way you can connect and download information or even other Bluetooth servers or clients. The next one is for uh, Lego Mindstorms, which at some point we'll do a video about that. And then this one is an experimental, it's Firebase. Firebase, it's, it's probably worth skipping also into. Firebase is actually now owned by Google, but it was a really cool service that you could build an app with a backend without knowing how to write a backend. So they do provide a bunch of different services like storing databases, authentication, uh, machine learning, things like that without you writing the code. You just need to integrate it with uh, your phone. App Inventor is providing some support of that, even though that it's still experimental. And extension. the capacity for other extensions in case that other people want to extend their software. In the middle screen, we have the viewer. And the viewer allows us to see how our components are gonna look on a phone. In this case, we're, we're using a phone that has 505 pixels by 320. We could probably uh, use if we wanted a tablet size or a monitor size, but we're gonna leave it as a phone. Here is just the components that we've dragged into our view. So in the components, do you know what is a tree structure? No. Roots? Well, how are trees? Um, They're big and tall with a bunch of leaves and to keep them on the ground, they have roots. Okay, well. And they communicate well, with mushrooms. Mushrooms. <laughs> well, there's branches, and the idea is that when, whenever we talk about uh, tree structures, is that we can put child items under these certain components. So for example, if I were to add a button, I ju I'm just gonna drag it, and I'm putting it under the screen. So you can see that my component is the screen, and then under it, there's button number one. So you can see, I can start adding all these guys, and it's and it could be, you know, like, like a, Wait a minute, but if you tap the screen, how, how can you make things jump? We'll get to that point. I know you're... So uh, we're going to delete this component. So you, you start adding components under components. So that way they belong to a view. Here is in case that you want to upload a media. So for example, let's go and look. You wanted, you wanted to have a background of, uh, 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 of canyon, a forest. Canyon. Okay, Grand Canyon. Let's look for a picture of the Grand Canyon. Let's download yeah. this image. For now, save image as, and then we're going to put it into the desktop, and we're going to put it, name it Grand Canyon. So here we can upload our media and grab Grand Canyon. And now it's uh, uploaded. So um, in the properties of things here. You just tell me, how do we drag it into the well? In here, we can now select as a background image, the Grand Canyon. So you can start seeing here in the properties tab that the screen, for example, is what we have selected here. Uh -huh. You can change uh, a bunch of things in the screen that are available for us to use. So we can even change the title. Instead of screen one, we're gonna call it welcome. So we're gonna, we're gonna double click here and we're gonna type welcome. Here's what I would like you to do then next. I would like you to grab a label, what? Uh... select a label from the from the palette, and then put it into the phone. There you go. And uh, I want you to select the label in the components area, and I want you to check the background color for white, because I want to make sure that it's visible, because with the Grand Canyon in the back, uh -huh. It is a little uh, difficult, so maybe let's explore if there's uh, if there's a way to fade out that screen. Let's see if if you click on screen in the components, click it once. Let's see if there's a screen animation. No, there's not. No other thing. Okay, doesn't matter. 
So uh, I, I was hoping that there would be a way to fade it out because it's a little too strong. But maybe let's just change it so that, that way we don't have anything and it does, it's not distracting us. Exactly. Okay? Why don't you click on the button in the components area? Okay. And then uh, you are going to uh, click and scroll down. And let's maybe change that text for button one down here. It's the, the text attribute. You can see if we select all that and we clear it all out, you can see that right here, if you let me borrow your mouse, right here, this guy here, right, yeah. is the attribute. So we're going to change the text. Just type hello. Okay. And then oh, yeah, look. now it, it says hello. hello. Uh, and then we're going to uh, select the label here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And um, I would like you to change the text for no text. So you're going to delete all the text for that. You got it. All right. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, let me do it. Perfect. Awesome. So. Mm, is it there now? I don't care. It's not there. So, okay. So here's, here's another thing that I would like to do also, because everything is just, Look. it's just locked in into, into the left. So what, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna change the the height and the width of the controllers to fill in the space. So I want you to go into height, I mean to width, sorry. Width, uh-huh. Okay. And then and then fill parent. You're gonna select fill parent and then click okay. So you see now that green line represents that the text. You can see that this line is now utilizing the full width. We're gonna do the same thing with the hello button. Can you do the same thing with the hello button? Just click on the hello button. Wait. Okay, click on that and then go to the width down here. And then you're gonna select fail parent. And you <gasps> see how the button, but now it is just end to end. So we need to add some- uh, Bigger, and we need to make it bigger. Some what? I wanna make it bigger. Yeah, so we need to either make it bigger. Wait, no, no, wait, it's the front size, go back. It's just front side. Front side. So how, how big do you want the font to be? The hello? Yeah, let's put 18. So it's bigger mm, and we're going to make uh, it bold. Mm. We can select. So we can also, in this case, in the, in the case of a button, now that we've enabled font, bold, and things like that, we can also select if we want a rounded shape. You can see how it changed to rounded edges around here. Oh, yeah. Or rectangular or oval. So we're gonna leave it rounded, um, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, with that, we have our basic uh, phone uh, phone app. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this guy to go under, so the the label happens here. And so now the label is up, the button is down. I changed the order. You can see how I changed the order. Oh, yeah. in here. Okay. Uh, so th this is then when we where we go into then discussing about the blocks area as we are learning how all this is done. So again, we have the user interface, layout, media, and other components that you can use. These are your tools that you can add to the app. Oh. This is where you see the app. Uh -huh. These are the components that we have selected for the app. This is this is the menu. This is the the, the plate, and this is what we've eaten. You know what is on our plate. <laughs> Uh, and that, and this it's is how we yes, and this is how we com uh, customize it. I always like to use the programming when you're programming. You're learning how to cook rather than well one particular cuisine. So in this case, I'm showing you the kitchen, where the kitchen is. The pantry is here. Here we have again the stove and the cooking area. So and then this is the, the how many ingredients we're we're having. Okay, so now that you we've got this button yeah, and you're probably wondering if we can see it on the emulator. So let's see go to the emulator. Close Spotify. And now we have a button and we can actually print it. But we also have a button and a label. So how about we try to do something when you press that button? If we go to the into the blocks area here this is where we will do some sort of programming. What's it's not that? really, this is just a center to focus on. So here you have- A backpack? Uh, yeah, a backpack. 
Uh, this thing has, uh, focuses things, zoom in, zoom out. This is for the trash, any warnings or errors that you're having with your code. But you're not really gonna write any code because I promise you, you are not really gonna type it. Yeah. You're gonna drag and drop it. So everybody understands that um, logic, you know, like if you're in a traffic light mm -hmm. and if the light is red, then you do what? Stop. Okay, and if the light is green, Okay, so there well, if you it's have. it's yellow, you slow down. There, there you understand that you are solving problems all the time. You're yeah. splitting the check How in a restaurant. Me? You are um, solving a problem there. How many people you have? How much tip, etc. If you are parking at a at a garage and you get a a, a thing that says the time that you came in you are also uh, solving a problem there because you will have to know how much you're going to pay. How does this programming language work? Well, it's called Scratch. It's also invented at the MIT. Wait, did we the game? The, the programming game? language is called Scratch. And you can do some pieces. Can we do Scratch stuff. Junior, the game? Scratch Junior is a simplified version for young kids. Scratch is uh, it's a first step for people that want to learn how to program. I know, I know, I want to learn how. You want to learn how to program. Well, you are learning already. So, uh, this is this is a this is one of the the ways that you can do it. So, on this left hand side, you have the blocks area. You have the built in, built -in. Uh, functions. Uh, we've got the built in ones, the built in control, logic, math, text, list, dictionaries, controls, variables, and procedures. We're gonna go through all these in a se in a second, but mm -hmm. let's understand the basics of Scratch. These are the things that we have selected and added to our screen, and these are other things that we have uh, available, like if we want to trigger something. So for example, we have our button. So if I click in the button, there's a bunch of different actions that I can do for my button. For example, when that button is clicked, so we have button one click and then we go into the label, we can probably set the label one, let's find the background. Set label one background. Let's delete this guy. I, I dragged it by accident, but it's a good chance to show that by dragging it here, we we throw it away and that way we keep our code clean. So we, when that button is one, the label, we're gonna set the background color two, and then we're gonna choose a color red. You see, I went into the colors. So now that it's there, we can see it here. But right now, um, let's connect it again to the emulator. We're gonna connect it to the emulator and make sure that it's running. And now we'll press a button and our label became red. What label? This guy, we had the label here, remember? Ah. Uh, we added it on the top and the label is uh, no, no, no. there. But, but wait, if we hit screen one, go to okay, screen Okay, let's one. go to the screen. You see, the label is on top. The button no, is no, no, no. What I'm talking about is go back to blocks, hit screen one. Uh huh. Up, no, up there. It will say, um, maybe set color to, um, what, we, what, what I was going to do was I was going to show you that I could change the background color. That's what I wanted. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Like, so so you, you, so wait, 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 you want to change the, the background button for the screen? Yeah. And how would you do it then? Uh, I take out this yeah and put this right here for later okay sounds good uh wait does this mean background no that's the screen orientation that means that if it's like this or like this screen one background color but is that wait wait, wait. but look at look at how it's connect, how it's oh. connected it's like a puzzle that's how uh, scratch works so right. since you're that one is for getting the value what you want is for setting the value, right? Yeah, so how do I set it? Well, look at look at your options. Let, let's look at, start reading some of these. If I look, wait a minute. So I found it, I found the right one. Okay, so then now connected. Wait, first I'll just connect this one, so let's just try it. Okay, now we go to the emulator. Wait, let me did tap it. Try it. <gasps> See? That now, now it happened. When you press a button, you set the the, the background. Okay, that's great. So you can you can now let's just go and recap a little bit so that everybody that is watching understands better what these things work. So all these 
works like a puzzle. So you can see how this guy has this little dent in here. That means that it can be connected in here. Mm -hmm. This guy has a little dent in here. That means that you get, it can be connected in here. Wait, I'm gonna change the color. Hang on. If we wanted to continue color. adding more stuff, like for example, any maybe random color, that's basically how you connect things. Mm -hmm. And these are your little blocks here become your procedures. That means that you know everything that happens here when button one click, that's what happens. So for example, let's go back and set up that button, the, the label, the background color that we had before. Well, come We're on, gonna can I set it also to blue. So that way we can see that both were changed into blue. Oh no, no, so, oh. So you can see two steps happen when the button one was clicked. So we go back into the emulator and we press it. You see that it's now blue no, no, but wait, 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 wait. and red. Change it, wait. Mm -hmm. Screen one, it would literally load. Every time you entered, it would change the color. Set screen one, background color. Wait, how do I enter? Yeah, this? but no, you already had that. No, but wait, wait, wait. If we attach this to it. Uh huh. You want to see what happens? Yeah. Okay. What does that mean? Let me tell you what happened. What? The this is so fast that it set it to red, and then immediately set it to blue. So you don't. You're not even seeing it in red. Oh wait, wait, wait. Let me do, wait, wait. I've got wait. I've got an idea. Bring this guy out, mm -hmm. and then I need to grab another one with one button, one quick. It, do you want to do the one for the label? The label. Wait. If I do it again, if we try it again, every time it might change to a different color. Like, well, watch. No, it doesn't work that way. And actually, I'm glad that you did it this way because it show it helps us to show that there are some errors. And when you see that there's this X right here. Mm -hmm. You are you you have errors, so we can we can show the the errors and in, in here. What is basically? It just wait. How do I make it like every time you enter the app, it changes the color? Oh, when when the app is started? Yeah. It, you, well, you for those for those things, yeah, you can set up something. Let's let's delete these guys. Uh, but for whenever you start the app. Uh -huh. Ideally, what you want is uh, you go into this designer mode, and that's where you set up uh, the background color to where is the background color? Background color. Oh, background color to default. But just wait, wait. That's when the app lo uh, launches. But um, anyway, you can see that now we only have one error, and that error is because this guy is just floating around. So, so we need to have a clean cup? Yeah. I don't know why it's not showing up here. Maybe Safari is, you know, one of those things that it doesn't show the, the, the warnings. But you can see that the, the error is on this guy. The warning is nowhere. So we have zero warnings. We have one with this. But we can, you know, set connect the, the, the label and the screen to go into different colors. So now we can go again and yellow. Let's, okay, let's find out that as yellow. It's gonna be very... Hooray! So now you can see that if we click on that, we have the background in red and the label in yellow. Now, there's an important aspect. One of the most important aspects on, on computers is to assign uh, variables. What are variables? What are variables? Mm -hmm. Variables are where you can store information temporarily on the computer. So for example, um, if we are going to deal, say, with some text, let uh, us create uh, some some text that we're going to to uh, plug in, okay. right? Okay. And uh, what we want is this text area allows us to handle text. This guy allows us to create empty an em like a string, so we can put it something like "hello," right? Okay. So then uh, we are going to try to set up the label text mm -hmm. to to have that hello okay okay so why don't you select label select mm -hmm. the label this one uh-huh and then you're gonna find set label text set label text found it okay and i don't know what what you do with, with this guy okay so 
and we're going to connect the text to hello. Now that we have the the one button one click, we can go here to the emulator. <laughs> and now that hello appears. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could ask you for your name? Leah. Yes. So then, how, where do we? Why don't we try to? If you were look at these fields here. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And if you needed a place where you could needed to put text, like what type of text? Like in your messages? Name? Yeah, your name. So what? Which one? Read up those and tell me which one would be the best one to utilize on to set up uh, text box. Okay, let's add a text box. When you arrive? Yeah. Over here? Right here? Uh, maybe a little bit above. Here? There you go. Perfect. And, but wait, 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 before you, no, you cannot write your name right now because of that is the designer mode. So uh, what we want also the designer mode to use a full width of the device because see, it's now using only the 50%. Do you remember where we did that? Um, no. No? It was right here. And then what was it, the property to like, so that it grows horizontally to utilize the full width. From size. No, font size? No, this, oh, no, no, the size. No, that's that's a font size. The font is a text. The hint is the, for when it's empty. So we, we're gonna put the hint, what is your name? Okay. And now that we have that, it says, what is your name? So the font, the font size, if we did say like 18, it's, it makes it bigger. Me. But if we're gonna make it, it bigger, snap. yeah, because it's small. So now what we gotta do is to make this component as wide as the screen. We, how, we so will. how do we do this? If you wanna make the box bigger, what would it be? Hmm, I'm trying to think. Let me look down. You need to make make the width of the, of oh, the... width. Okay. So parents. Okay. Perfect. Now it is actually utilizing. We can see that it's utilizing. What is your name? Time. But then we have this component, the text. We need to pull that name so that we can put it into our uh, label, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't we grab, go go again to the blocks area. Blocks. Yeah. Blocks. And when we press uh, this guy, we're gonna grab. For now, let's go delete this and let's delete this, these two guys. Let's delete all these. Uh huh. Okay. There's an error again because something is not connected. So, in the text area, what we need to get, where, what were we gonna do with this? We were gonna grab the text from where? Mm. And set it, set it in the label. What did we just put? The, what is your name? Yes. And what is it called? Text box oh. one. Okay, so then go to text box one and then get the one that is getting the text. Uh, text, 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 this one? No, well, read it. Text box enabled? No. We're, when we put your name here, mm -hmm. we're going to display it on the label when we pre uh, press a button. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to grab the text from text box one. And when we press a button, we're gonna put that text into label one. Text box. Text box. Yes. Okay. Now go. To the designer? No, go to the emulator. Where's the emulator? Oh, there yeah. You go. And I'll type your name. What's your name? Type your name. Um... Okay. And then, you see, you put the text there. Now, why don't we make that label a little bit bigger? Uh -huh. Let's make it, let's go back into the designer. Uh -huh. And we're gonna make it, I don't know, 20, 20 and uh, both. We need to understand variables. What is variables? Variable is, uh, is when, when you store oh, a value uh, in the computer. Uh, for a limited time. For a limited amount of time, so that you can perform something. Because now our goal is that we need to make sure that we type hello Leo. Mm -hmm. The app is gonna say hi. 
Okay. Uh -huh. So we're gonna grab the screen one, and maybe maybe uh, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we uh, we say hi to the app. Okay. So what we need to do is to create some text. <laughs> Uh huh. That we are going to join this. That means that we're going to put two strings together, and then here we're going to put hello, comma. You got to have an Oxford comma, and then hello Leo. So if we go back here. <laughs> Whoa! But you can see that by doing this, we are creating a new place where we are storing <laughs> the information. Aww. We can also, we can also store the information by saying set this one, we're gonna set and then we're gonna choose, uh, you can't see it very well in here because probably it's optimized for a different browser. So we're gonna create a, a uh, either we have, local or global variables. Local variables live there just temporarily. Mm -hmm. Global variables live as long as a program exists. Mm -hmm. Both of them are temporary, but one just finishes in a shorter amount of time mm -hmm. to not saturate the computer with information. So for example, we're gonna say, initialize local uh, name to uh, name or like greeting, okay? That's how we're gonna call it. We can choose now that we created this. We can even put it like inside here. Where we can then say, we can, we're gonna initialize the greeting to hello. And then while that local variable is still around, this is, this is, the amount of time that that variable will live. Past this point, it won't live anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. That means that the computer is gonna clean itself. It's gonna go and pick it up. You can see that so now I am referencing the variable greeting by saying I'm gonna get whatever value that greeting has, which is hello comma, and join it, meaning I'm gonna put two tag pieces of text together with the box, the text that it's on the, on the text box. Mm -hmm. And then this guy, is um, setting the label one to that. Basically, it is the same thing. Right now, you know, we're not really changing much visually, because, but we did it this way, okay? Uh -huh. At the same time, we can we can modify. Um, modify, I mean change a little yeah, bit. Yeah, change it. Let's, let's understand global and temporary and local variables. Global live as long as the application is still around. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're gonna set up like something like uh, name. So like if you should delete it and reset it. Yeah, so let's let's set up for just to show you an example. Uh -huh. um, this variable we're gonna call it to name and then during this entire block, we are going to set that variable, the name, set global name to and then we're gonna get uh, greeting. It doesn't have greeting right here because I'm right after, so it has to be inside of the scope. So that way we can have that variable greeting. Oh. Okay? How do we know that it's global even though that this, this function is getting rid of everything else, the greeting and the name? What I'm gonna do is that I'm going to set up maybe another another um, label right here, and I'm gonna set up a second label. So we're gonna set it up so that it says global name equals, we're gonna see how what's the value of global name, and here we're gonna leave it empty. Okay? And we're gonna add a second button here that we're gonna call it um, update global variable. So once we go back into the blocks and then we're going to set up another wait, wait, look, control. Wait, 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 there's a warning. Oh, there's one warning. What is the warning? It's probably that. I don't see it. I don't see where the warning is coming from. 
Oh, here, show warnings. Here it is. The, this guy is not initialized. So we're going to just set it up to an empty text. Okay? Mm -hmm. And actually, we don't even need that other button. Let me remove that other button, the, the second button, because we don't need a, an action to trigger. This guy is just going to be reading from that global variable, which it's destroyed after. So here, we're going to set it up for label three, and we're going to go into the set label. Visible? No. Text. Set level three text to variables get and we're gonna request the global variable called name. Okay, so let's review then again the code that we have. Uh, we had our we were initializing a global variable name to an empty string, and that empty string um, we're going to be refreshing it every time with a global variable name. Uh, we're initializing that global variable name, and actually, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna put the name this guy here, and we're gonna remove this guy, and we're gonna use this get greeting. Oh, duh. How do I do? Oh, duh. So we have hello comma space, and then we have our greeting. We're just gonna join it with the text of this. So, but also we want to get the text box one. What? No, the text. We wanna also pass it as we wanna we wanna also use that value to uh, to change the global variable name uh, to that value. So then. We're going to set the text of the label three mm -hmm. to the value of that global variable that we're changing to the to the name. Actually, let's even let's even go for another. Do we have the, the designer? Let's add another button just to always we're going to we're going to put it here. We're going to change again the width. We're going to mm -hmm. yeah, fill parent. And then here we're going to say What's the global variable value? Okay. So when we press this guy, we're gonna go with the blocks again, and then this is button two. So when we press it, when we press it, that button, we are going to refresh that, the text of the label to the global variable. Okay. Okay? And then maybe here, instead of hello, we're gonna say, Hi. No, we're gonna just simply say uh, update global variable. Hey. Okay. So if we go into the emulator and run it again. Next thing. So again, a variable is where we store data. Temporarily, mm -hmm. a global one. Everybody can access it. Oh. Every every button everywhere else can access that variable. A local variable, only that piece of code can access it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why we created these two buttons. Update global variable, which is going to use the the name here, the Leo, and when we click it, it's going to print Hello Leo, and it's also updating the value of the global variable. So when we click this one, what's the global val uh, variable value? We are retrieving that value and putting it here. Leo. Does that make sense? We're storing it somewhere where we can always access it. That's good and bad. That's good because we have it available and it's easier for the programmer, but it's bad because we don't want to keep it around so that the, com the computer memory all of a sudden becomes clogged with things that you don't need. It's like, it's like messy. It's like a living room with all the toys. You don't want all the toys there. Just one of the ones that you're using. And then when you're done, you put them away. That's the same thing with global and local variables. Local variables disappear when you don't use them anymore. Global variables stay there for a while. Ah. Forever. So, okay. Does that, is that part kind of clear? Uh-huh.
Okay, we've so far only been dealing with text. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is uh, text? Text is a data type. And mm -hmm. what is a data type? A data type is the way that you can represent the world. The, the, the type of information that you can represent the world with. So you, you have in here, you have numbers. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is just a regular number. <laughs> weird. And you can also use them to create a different kind of like binary or other type of uh, data. But right now, let's just consider we have numbers, we have text. We're gonna we wanna put it here and let's zoom in here. So that way- Zoom, enhance. We, yeah, zoom, enhance. Boop. Those are some of the data types that you have. Also, you have binary uh, or Boolean. I mean, Boolean, not you binary. have Boolean. Binary is the, the way that data is encoded inside of the computer. Bo uh, Boolean is just true or false. Mm -hmm. Yes or no. That's it. That's what a Boolean data type is. This guy is uh, text and this guy is numbers. Uh. With that information, you can group it together you're going to get uh, what it's known as data structure. Again, we have a data, a data uh, what, let's recap. Let's again, recap global variable and local variable because we wanna, uh, and what is scope? Um, scope is a way for us to determine how long a variable lives. The scope of, of, a, glo of a variable is defined, you know, maybe the function. Well, like if this is if this is when we press the button and we initialize a variable here, it will live only until the end of this function because that's what we're working on with. But there are global variables that are stored in a different uh, manner that makes them available for here or for other functions. So if we said these variable, we have one action is when we press a button. This is another action that we press another button or input another text a local variable would only live within that function. It would only live in here. But a global variable lives outside of those functions in an area that is accessible for everyone. So if we say in here, in this function, that it's in blue, and let's just paint this guy here. No, yellow. But no, no, just put this one as blue. And let's put this guy as, as yellow. Hey. Um, whatever we define in yellow, we live inside of the yellow. Whatever we define inside of the blue, lives inside of the blue. And also whatever we define in here, inside of the red, which includes that other two, are gonna live here. So, you know, in short, local, local variables live in in their respective environments okay and global encompasses everything uh. not a good uh programming practice to have global variables javascript has it uh but anyway okay so then the other thing that we that i wanted to talk about with drawings was if we have um data types right now we know how to represent the world for this purpose as numbers as numbers yes or no which is bull a boolean data type you mean a guy that mean that's like a the code that's being meets all the other codes no that's just saying yes or no and then uh and text for this this is what it's providing us this thing right mm -hmm. numbers yes or no or text that's what this thing is providing right now there are other data types in other programming languages right now just because we're using this one in here we're limiting to this when we decide that we are going to combine this data together and start utilizing it 
we can probably set up a list of numbers, like for example, the ages of uh, some people, like say 15, 21, 30, 55, three and 10. That could be an, an array. An array is just basically a list. And a list is what we have right in here. So we can make a list with, you know, a bunch of strings. So then after we organize it as a list, then we're gonna create an, an what we're gonna do is that we're gonna modify our project to create an empty list. And every time that we type our name, we're gonna add it to the list. And then whenever we press the other button, mm -hmm. we're gonna display all the elements on the list. So we have button one. When we press button one, we are going to uh, grab this list, add, add an item to the list that we have. Um, mm -mm -mm, where did we go? Oh, get, get, and we're gonna get our list names. Me? Yeah, because we're gonna grab the, the list names that we have, that global one, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be adding whatever the text box text is. Uh -huh. Okay? And that's how we're gonna be adding. The other button, when we press button two, when we press button two, we're gonna get that our uh, global names and for for each item in the list we're gonna just pick a random item in the list we're gonna join that list with commas and then we're going to set up label three, the text. So we're going to set label three to joining our list with commas. Again, we're going to say, you see how now, now let's put, uh, and let's maybe also clear whatever the text was. Um, just so we have a better interaction. So then text box one, text, set text one one text to an empty text. And then we're also going to change the label to let the user know that we have added set label one text to we're gonna put um, join. We're gonna join that with say, by saying uh, we we added, and then we're gonna put another one, another join, and another one that it's a variable. Just saying, I don't know. We don't need the variable. We need this guy this here text box one okay we're moving it with another piece of text that is going to say to our list okay so essentially we're going to say with this text here with this code right here and let me just zoom out so that way i can move this out of the way when we press the button we're gonna add the new name to the list. We're gonna clear the text. Oh, we're gonna put the, the clearing of the text at the very end because otherwise we're gonna have, we're gonna set the label to whatever that, saying we added that text to the list mm -hmm. and we're gonna clear it. And then when we press button two, we're gonna see the entire list uh -huh. by joining the entire list by a comma. Uh -huh. so, so now that it's here, we can say, uh, Leo, we added Leo to our list. Okay, so then who are we gonna add? Give me some of your- Kai, Mateo. Okay, Kai, Mateo. Okay, do you Aurora. wanna see the full list? Aurora. Okay, let's add Aurora. <laughs> I don't know how you spell it. Aurora, there you go. And then let's 
see what is the value of our list. Okay. Leo, Leo, Kai, Mateo, Aurora. You saw how we started adding all those values, but it's because we we put them as a, at a place where we can constantly have that access, that variable. That's the global uh -huh. versus local information. Does that make sense, Leo? Yeah. So I think with this, we can say that we've safely finished the first part of the class. Tomorrow, we're gonna do the second part where we are going to review how we're gonna do procedures. We're gonna, we're gonna build an app so that you can go with your friends to a restaurant and split the check. So uh, we're gonna talk about control, control structures uh -huh. and uh, understand better the text and logic and math on App Inventor. I hope you found this useful and uh, I'll see you for the next, for the part two. Yeah! Bye! Bye!